part number 7 covers two important fax devices the first one is triple sc and the second one is upfc triple sc is also referred as static synchronous series compensator and UPFC is referred as Unified Power Flow Controller. So let us understand each of them one by one. Starting with the Triple AC. So Triple AC is Static Synchronous Series Compensator. Sometimes it is also called as S cube C or S3 C. This is the line diagram of Triple AC. And below that, the power exchange diagram is shown. In the construction of triple AC, multipulse converter is used, and also the energy storage component is used. So, this triple AC is connected to the power system with the help of coupling transformer. But this compensator is connected in series with the line. So that is the major difference between the state comb and the triple AC. The state comb is normally connected in shunt manner, but this compensator is connected in series manner. So series connected synchronous voltage source that can vary the effective impedance of a transmission line by injecting a voltage containing an appropriate phase angle in relation to the line current. So this is the working principle of triple SC. It injects the voltage of a proper magnitude and with a specific magnitude of the phase angle with respect to the line current. It has capability of exchanging the real and reactive power with the transmission system. So same as the state comb, it can exchange both types of power, real power and reactive power. If the injected voltage VPQ is in phase with the line current, then the voltage would exchange the real power. Right? So if the injected voltage is in phase with the line current, then the real power exchange would happen between the line and the compensator. On the other hand, if the injected voltage is in the quadrature with the line current, then the reactive power is either absorbed or generated would be exchanged. So in short, the phase angle of the injected voltage decides either the exchange of real power or the reactive power. This compensator comprises a voltage source converter in which its coupling transformer is connected in series with the transmission line. Right? So here you can see that the primary winding of the coupling transformer is connected in series with the line whereas on the secondary side the voltage source converter along with the energy storage element is connected whereas in the case of the state comb the primary winding of the coupling transformer is connected in shunt with the line right so that is the basic difference between the line diagram of state comb and triple AC. The valve side voltage rating is higher than the line side voltage rating of the coupling transformer to reduce the required current rating of the gate turn of thyristor valves. Right? So there are two windings of this coupling transformer. The primary winding is in the series with the line and the secondary winding where the multipulse converter and the energy storage devices are connected. In short, the voltage rating on this side is kept higher to keep the current in this branch of minimum magnitude so that we can reduce the current ratings of the gate ton of thyristors required in the construction of this voltage source converter. Right? 
it is a basic concept that in the transformer on whichever side the magnitude of the voltage is higher then the current magnitude would be lower the valve side winding is delta connected that is on this side if we consider this uh, winding is a primary winding and this winding is the secondary winding then the secondary winding the winding which is present on the valve side that is normal in the delta connected to provide a path for third harmonic to flow right so that the third harmonic does not go into the system the basic dc voltage for the conversion to the ac is provided by the capacitor which means that this energy storage could be a capacitor and the dc to ac conversion is achieved by the pulse width modulation technique so by choosing an appropriate pwm technique this dc to ac conversion can be done the dc capacitor rating is chosen to minimize the ripple in the dc voltage so while designing the triple ac the rating of the dc capacitor should be chosen such that when we convert ac into dc using this multiple converter then that dc would contain less amount of ripples so an mov which is also known as the metal oxide varistor is installed across the dc capacitor to limit its voltage and provide protection to the valves right so here metal oxide varistor serves two purposes the first one to limit its voltage voltage appears across this energy storage element capacitor and provides the protection to the valves of this multiple converter a series capacitor compensate the transmission line inductance by presenting a lagging quadrature voltage with respect to the transmission line current so in the power exchange diagram you can see that here the line current or you can say the load current is taken as the reference and the voltage injected into the line may be leading in nature or lagging in nature so when the voltage vector is projected on the x axis and on the y axis then we get the active component of the voltage and the reactive component respectively and this magnitude of active and reactive component decides the exchange of active and reactive power into the system let's say if the vp is positive then the triple ac supplies the active power to the system and if the vp active component of the injected voltage is negative then it absorbs the active power from the system on the other hand if vq right reactive component is positive then this static synchronous series compensator absorbs the reactive power from the system and when the vq is negative then it supplies the reactive power into the system so that is the power exchange happens into the static synchronous series compensator depending on the phase angle between the injected voltage and the line current so this voltage acts in opposition to the leading quadrature voltage appearing across the transmission line inductance which has a net effect of reducing the line inductance it is the base suited for power flow control and sub synchronous resonance mitigation right primarily static synchronous series compensator is used for these two purposes the first one to control the power flow and the second is mitigation of the sub synchronous resonance next is upfc unified power flow controller so this one is the line diagram of upfc where you can see there are two converters the converter 1 and the converter 2 the semiconductor devices of the converter 1 and converter 2 are controlled by this control module so the entire system works on the feedback mechanism parameters are sensed and based on the algorithm designed into the control module 
appropriate magnitude of the firing angle and the modulation index are decided for the converter 1 and the converter 2 for the appropriate function of the UPFC. So it comprises the two voltage source converters coupled through a common DC terminal. Right. So here is the common DC terminals. One voltage source converter which is converter 1 is connected in shunt with the line through a coupling transformer. Right. So here the converter 1 is connected to the line through the coupling transformer. But this converter 1 is connected in the shunt manner. Whereas the other voltage source converter, converter 2, is in inserted in series with the transmission line through an interface transformer. So here you can observe that how can we connect converter in shunt or the series manner through the coupling transformer. So when you observe this connection of the coupling transformer to the transmission line, you can easily understand shunt connection and the series connection of the voltage source converter to the system. On other way, you can say that the unified power flow controller is the combination of state com and static synchronous series compensator. Right? So it is the combination of triple AC and state com. DC voltage for both converters is provided by a common capacitor bank. So whenever the DC voltage is required by the converter 1 or the converter 2, that voltage is provided by the common capacitor which is connected at this point. The series converter is controlled to inject a voltage phasor VPQ in series with the line and magnitude can be varied from 0 to VPQ maximum. Right? So the injected voltage decides the exchange of real and reactive power between the compensator and the transmission line. Moreover, the phase angle of VPQ can be independently varied from 0 to 360 degree by appropriate control action taken over the converter 2. In this process, the series converter exchange both real and the reactive power with the transmission line. The shunt connected converter which is here converter 1 is mainly used to supply the real power demand of the converter 2. So whatever the real power or we can say the active power is demanded by converter 2 that demand is fulfilled by converter 1. Right? So the converter 1 takes the active power from the transmission line and which proper magnitude of that active power is provided to the converter 2 by this converter 1. Which it derives from the transmission line itself, the shunt converter maintains the constant voltage of the DC bus. In addition, the shunt converter functions like a state comb and independently regulate the terminal voltage of the interconnected bus by generating or absorbing a requisite amount of the reactive power along with the fulfillment of the real power which is demanded by the converter 2 the task of the converter 1 is to maintain the voltage of the bus by generating or absorbing a requisite amount of the reactive power the capabilities of the UPFC Similar to the state comb, it can provide us the voltage control, transient stability point of view, UPFC is preferred. It can also damp out the power oscillations in the transmission system. Apart from that, definitely the reactive power compensation is done by these type of fax devices. We can also control the power flow direction of the power as well as the magnitude of the power both active as well as the reactive power and also the sub synchronous resonance can be eliminated so these are the key features of unified power flow controller